In this video, I'm just going to do an example of a complex circuit with multiple capacitors. So our first step is to find the equivalent capacitance of the circuit. And we're going to do that by breaking down each element um, and then simplifying our circuit. So I'm going to start off with this element right here. And these capacitors are in parallel with each other. So we know that when they're in parallel, our equivalent capacitance is equal to just we just add them together. So two farads plus four farads equals six farads. So these two capacitors act like one six farad capacitor. So then we're going to redraw our circuit. And when you redraw it, it looks like this with our 100 volt battery, two farad capacitor at the top. We have this branch here with two capacitors, and then the bottom branch has two capacitors. We've combined these into one capacitor. My capacitors aren't looking very uniform today, sorry about that. So this is 100 volts, this is 2 farads, this is 6 farads, this is 3 farads, this is 1 farad, and this is 6 farads. So now we continue to simplify. In this next drawing, we can simplify each of these branches. So we have the 3 farad and the 6 farad in series with each other. So we know that our equivalent capacitance equation in series, we're going to take 1 over 6 farads plus 1 over 3 farads. And we're going to take the inverse of that, and that's going to give us 2 farads. Then down here, we'll take these two together, and they are also in series. So we'll do 1 over 1 plus 1 over 6. And take the inverse of that, and that'll give us 0 0.86 farads. So now we can simplify these two into one capacitor each. So we'll redraw the circuit. We have our 100 volt battery, so this 2 farad capacitor up here, and then we have the 6 and 3 have been simplified into one capacitor there, and the 1 and the 6 have been simplified to one capacitor here. So we have 100 volts here, 2 farads, 2 farads. 0.86 farads, and now we'll combine these two. And since they're in parallel, we're just going to add them together. And then our last drawing here. We now just have two capacitors in series. So we're simplifying the circuit with each drawing. So sometimes if you're doing a simpler one, you might be able to just write out one equation and it won't, um, it'll be a lot easier, but I'd recommend doing this for the more complex ones, redrawing it each time. Okay, so now we have, oops, I changed to black. Um, 100 volts, this is 2 farads, and this is 2.86 farads. And we're going to find the equivalent capacitance by doing 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2.86. And then we're going to take the inverse of that. So that gives us 1.18 farads. So now that we have that number, this is our equivalent capacitance, so that's an important number. Uh, the next thing that we can do is calculate the total charge. And we know that the total charge is equal to the capacitance times the total voltage, the equivalent capacitance, I should say. Let me rewrite that just so that we're clear. Okay, so 
we're going to take our equivalent capacitance, which is 1.18 farads, multiply by our delta V, which is 100 volts, do a little easy math, and we get 118 coulombs of charge. So that's our total charge. So we found the total amount of charge that can be um, separated by this, this capacitor, or this circuit, excuse me. Now, I think it's helpful to draw a chart to keep track of all of your capacitors. So we have capacitance, we have charge, and we have delta V. And we're going to find the capacitance, well, we know the capacitance. We're going to find the charge and the delta V for each of our capacitors. And there's a lot of them. So let's see if we can write all of these down. So we have, we'll start at the top. So we have a 2, a 6, and a 3. And there's two 2 farads. So I'm going to say this one is 2 on the top. This is in farads. This is in coulombs. And this is in volts. Then we have a 6. We have a 3. And then we have a 1, a 2, and a 4. One. This is going to be the two on the bottom. And then the four. Okay, so we're going to start filling in this chart, and basically we just work backwards. So we worked all the way down, redrawing and simplifying the circuit, and now we're going to work backwards uh, to figure out all the other things that we need to figure out. So for this two farad capacitor, we know for both of them, we know that the charge is equal to 1.18 farads because charge in series is going to be the same. So since the entire capacitor separates 1.18 coulombs of charge, oh, that's definitely not the right thing. I just totally copied the wrong, the wrong question, the wrong number. My goodness, I'm sorry. The charge is 118 coulombs, is what I meant to say. Um, so this entire circuit separates 118 coulombs of charge. You have 118 coulombs of charge on this plate, 118 coulombs of charge on this plate, and then remember this middle part just polarizes with 118 coulombs of charge on each of those plates. So we know the charge. We know the capacitance is 2 farads. So we can find the voltage of that one by doing delta V is equal to charge over capacitance. So our charge is 118 coulombs. Our capacitance is 2 farads. And we get 59 volts. So we can go down here to our chart, 118 coulombs, and then 59 volts. And that's where we're keeping track of our answers. Now for this one, we also can find our delta V by doing 100, and, well, let's do Q over C so you know what I'm doing, 118 coulombs divided by 2.86 farads. And that gives us, let me find my math here, 41 volts. Actually, that's not how I did that, but that's okay. There's more than one way to do these. Um, what we should find is that we can do these several ways, right? Um, so you can do delta V equals Q over C, and you get about 41 volts. You can also do, you know the total voltage is 100 volts. So um, if you do 59, 100 minus 59, you know whatever is left here has to be, has to be, this plus this has to add up to 100, right? Because when you go in a circle, you have to go to zero. So if you start with zero volts here, you add 100 volts here, you lose 59 volts here, you've got to lose the other 41 volts here to get back to zero. That's our loop law. So that's 41 volts. You can solve it in either way. So now we work backwards, and now we know each of these two capacitors, um, which are both equivalent capacitors, each one has 41 volts. So let's use our 2 farad capacitor here, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to find the charge. So 
So we're going to do Q is equal to C times delta V. And our capacitance is 2 farads. And we're multiplying by our voltage, which was 41 volts. And this is rounded a little bit, so if you get slightly different numbers, that's okay. It's just it's rounding it. So we get 82 um, coulombs there. Then for this one, we have Q equals C times delta V. So we have 0 0.86 farads times 41 volts. And that gives us 35 point three coulombs. Now we should know, note that these two added together need to be our total charge. So 82, 82 plus 35.3 has to add up to 118. It's not exact because of the rounding, but it's pretty close. So that's kind of like your double check. Another way to solve this one would have been to take 130 or 118, which is our total charge, subtract 82, and that would have given you your um, your answer there for, it would have given you the same answer, although it's slightly different because of rounding. So now we move up and now we know that the, um, let's do the six farad capacitor first. So we know that the charge on this is equal to 82 coulombs because charge in series is the same. So if this whole branch separates 82 coulombs of charge, then the 6 farad uh, capacitor has 82 coulombs of charge separated. Um, so we're going to use, we need to find our delta V. So we're going to use the equation delta V is equal to Q over C. And we know our charge is 82 coulombs. And the capacitance is 6 farads. And so that gives us 13.7 volts. So now that is uh, capacitor 6, the 6 farad capacitor. So we know it's 82 coulombs and 13.6 volts. So we can come down here. And we know we have 82 coulombs and 13.7 volts. Great. Now we do the same for our three farad capacitor. Delta V is equal to Q over C. So our Q is 82 coulombs because they're in series, so they have the same charge. But now we're just dividing it by three farads, which gives us 27 3 volts. So now we go back down to our chart, and this is 82, and then this is 27.3. And we can kind of double check ourselves. We should have um, our delta Vs adding up to uh, something. I don't see the number right now. The delta V of this whole thing, which is 41. Yeah, so they have to add up to 41, which they do. So that's good. Okay, so now let's do these ones on the bottom here. So let's do our one farad capacitor. And we know that the charge on that one is equal to this 35.3 coulombs because capacitors in series are going to have the same charge. And we knew that this, which is the equivalent capacitance, has a charge of 35.3. So we have 35.3 coulombs. We divide by the capacitance, which is 1 farad. And we get 35.3 volts. And then that one is not an equivalent, right? So that's its own. So we have 35.3 volts and 35.3 coulombs.
And now we just have to um, solve this last one. Oops, I went too far. And then split it back up. So let's use. So here's my six farad capacitor. And we know delta V is equal to Q over C. So my charge here is the same as this one, 35.3 coulombs, because they're in series. I divide by my six farad capacitance, and I get 5.9 volts. And now I move up this way, and I know that these both have 5.9 volts of capacitance. I mean, voltage, goodness. So I'm looking for my charge now because I know my voltage for both of them since they're in parallel and they have the same voltage. So I'm going to use Q is equal to C times delta V. And for my two farad capacitor, I have a capacitance of two farads. And I multiply by 5.9 volts. And that gives me 11.8 coulombs. So I know that my two farad capacitor has a voltage of 5.9 and a capacitor a charge of 11.8 coulombs. And the charge was 5.8. Okay, and last one. Okay, so my last one, I have Q equals C times delta V. My capacitance is 4 farads. My voltage is 5.9 volts. And that gives me 23.6 coulombs. So 23.6 and 5.9. Okay, so there's the whole picture. That's the capacitance, or the charge and the voltage for each of our capacitors. Um, we could do another quick little um, double check. Remember that you can always double check by uh, adding your charge together to make sure it's what your total charge is supposed to be. Um, adding your total voltage together to making sure it's what it is supposed to be. Remember that these are the rules that we're following. Charge is the same for capacitors in series, and charge adds up for the total charge for capacitors in parallel. And then voltage is the same for capacitors in parallel, and voltage adds up to the total voltage for capacitors in series. So those are the rules that we're following. That's all.